Hey guys, it's Scott here and welcome to today's FIFA 19 video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you do, hit the thumbs up to show your support. If you've got any feedbacks or thoughts on the ratings in this video, let me know by putting them in the comment section down below. But if you are new to the channel and you want to see daily FIFA streams and videos of FIFA 19, then you can subscribe and join us. If you've got any questions, then also leave those in the comments, but let's get into it. EA have just dropped 80 to 61 in the top 100 ratings. Obviously yesterday we had 100 to 81. If you missed that, then that is uploaded on my channel. But let's get into things, shall we? First things first, we are going with Raja Nyngalen picks up number 80 slot. Uh, known for his intimidating presence in the middle of the pitch. He's just a bit of a machine, isn't he? So Raja, three star, three star, high, high. Again, as expected, a very, very well-rounded card. Still going to be an absolute monster. Not like Vidal, who had a massive pace downgrade. Even though he gets a little bit older, he hasn't lost that pace. He's still at 75, so still a beast. Let's move on to the next one. We've got Alexandro sticking at 86. Steadily building his reputation around the world after making his presence known in Serie A. Ah, yes, he is. This is still a monster, monster card. Potentially the best left back in the game in terms of like work rates and stats combined. Uh, five foot eleven with high high three star three star eighty five eighty two eighty three is mad. So eighty six for Sandro is very very nice. Uh, some people are thinking that he might go up a little bit, but eighty six is his rating for this year. Next, move on to another Juve player in Medi Benatia, Moroccan international, absolute beast as well. Really pushed his way through into the Juve team uh, after moving there. Now an eighty six rated. Medium high, 6-2 with a 3-star weak foot is solid. Uh, 70, 87 and 85. I mean, I remember using some of his informs and he also had, what, his team of the season, wasn't it? He had some mad stats. So this is pushing a little bit closer to those. And if he gets an inform or two, he may become one of the best centre-backs that there is. Like, these stats are already very, very good. Let's move on. To number 77, Danny Parejo, up to an 86. Wow, okay. Though often deployed in a deeper midfield role, his strengths tend to skew towards the offensive. Oh dear, though. Um, 47 pace means that he's not going to get used uh, by anybody, realistically. Medium low. Uh, four star, three star is okay with good height. Again, shooting and dribbling are okay. Passing is great. Defending and physical aren't bad. Unless the gameplay changes massively in FIFA 19 from 18, then pace is going to be too important in order to use someone that's got less than 50. So we'll see. Maybe he'll fit the new matter of the game where slower, just better passes and holders of the ball are going to be good. But as it stands, I wouldn't be too excited about that Danny Parejo. Let's move on. Who is next? Nemanja Matic is up to 86 Generally deployed solely as a defensive midfielder. Yes, exactly. So, 3-star, three 3-star, three medium-high, 6-4. Again, still good stats. Very, very well-rounded, other than his pace. <sighs> See, he's a little bit higher. Like, above the 50 mark is getting to the point where maybe with a chem style of, like, shadow, you can just about start to use them. But... I mean, it's still a little bit of a downer, but early on in the game, he might actually be just a bit of a rock. Before you get these massive icons that everyone can afford and massive informs and stuff like that, he may actually be good enough because you're not seeing 90 plus pace on every player, so he can keep up with a lot of what you're going to come up against. So, could be a very nice card. Shame he isn't a little bit faster, though. What we got next? 75 is Douglas Costa is up to 86. Wow. One of the fastest left midfielders in the game. Doesn't surprise me. So three star keeps his five star skills. Not bad. High medium, five for eight. 95 pace, 91 dribbling. Decent shot, good passing. It's a shame his shooting is a little bit higher, but hopefully it's brought down by maybe like penalties and volleys. And his actual shooting stats that matter are pretty good. But we obviously have to wait to see in-game stats, so we cannot speculate on that at this point in time. But could be a very, very nice card this year. And again, give him maybe even just one in form. Bang! Get nearly 70 physical 80 shooting. My goodness. Cesar Azpilicueta is an 86 centre-back. Interesting because this season he is playing as a right-back. 
Uh, normally, with the player positions on FIFA, they base it off of where they're going to be playing in the upcoming season. For example, when Mane got a team of the season at right wing, then Liverpool bought Salah, they moved Mane's card to a left wing the next year because that's where he was going to play. Salah was obviously going to be on the right. So interesting that they haven't got Asby down as a right back, despite him playing there so far. But... We'll see. Maybe I'll get some right back in forms. After making the transition from fullback to centre back a couple of seasons ago, Spaniard has thrived by playing the position to his strengths. He is one of the best defenders in the league and can just play all across the back four, which is why he's so good. Medium, medium, 5'10, 3 star, 2 star. Good pace, great defending, decent physical. Now, a lot of people won't use him purely because of his height, because he's not over six foot, but I think he could still be a bit of a beast. Again, if he did get an inform, then as it stands, it would probably be at right back. Maybe he's not quick enough for right back, but at centre back, that kind of pace is actually very, very good. So maybe you'll see him used. It's just whether crossing is going to be good this year. Again, a lot of this is speculation. We don't know who is going to fit the meta of FIFA 19, because we don't know whether crossing is going to be great. Whereas last year, it wasn't really that important. So it didn't really matter if you had a six foot seven centre back or not. Well, let's move on. Naldo, 86 centre back as well. The Brazilian Colossus is tall even by centre back standards at six foot six. Yes, he is. So medium, medium, six six with a four star weak foot. That's solid. Defending stat is monster. His pace isn't, his physical is good, he's got good strength, it's his jumping that lets down his physical quite a bit, so his strength will probably be 80 plus, uh, but again his pace, we'll have to wait and see, I'd like to say that a 63 pace centre back could be usable, but who knows with foot 19 we'll have to wait and see as I keep saying over and over, but not a bad card right there for Naldo. We've got next, Fernandinho is up to an 86. Another paragon of the modern defensive midfielder. Has the ideal attributes for his position. He does. He is sick for Man City. So, 5'10", medium high. 4-star, 3-star is pretty good. Well, actually, very good. 4-star weak foot is nice. So, yet again, another well-rounded card. If you compare it to Matic, then he's got, what, like 13 more pace? Was Matic 54? Something like that. So... A lot more usable and more well-rounded, maybe not as much physical, but you transfer that over to pace and he's probably better as an all-rounder, could potentially even use him as a centre mid rather than just a CDM. Obviously he's lacking in the height that other CDMs may have, but still, very nice stats for Fernandinho and he's growing to become just an absolute monster in Ultimate Team because of his time with Man City. Let's move on. Miralem Pjanic sticks there. Um as a solid rating. Not bad. So he's stay, uh, keeping his four-star weak foot. Medium, medium. I'm not sure if that's what he was before, but not bad. Three-star skills, 5'10". It's another one of those cards, similar to some of the ones we looked at yesterday. He probably won't fit in a lot of people's teams because they just won't want this kind of player that doesn't have the greatest defensive values or the greatest offensive values. He's got good dribbling and passing. Great. Now, in FIFA for years, that hasn't meant anything. Yet again, the question is whether this year this kind of player in the midfield is actually going to be usable or not. Because Iniesta and players like that over the years, David Silva, have just been a bit meh. So, I like Pjanic to be usable. His team of the season was unreal, but that's because basically every stat just got boosted massively. Next, let's move on. Who we got? Leroy Sané is up to 86. He was unbelievable last season. Another speedy winger who makes a leap to world class with exceptional technique on the ball. Yes, he does. Three-star weak foot. Shame it's not a four-star. Uh, but three-star, four-star is okay. High medium, six foot. Great pace, great dribbling, good shooting, good passing, not bad physical either. This is going to be a very popular card, as his lower one was in FIFA 18 at the start of the year. Sané is going to be an absolute menace, probably going to be very expensive. And I'm not looking forward to playing against him, to be honest with you. So we've got nine left to go. Leonardo Bonucci is up next, down to an 86 from his 88 before. He's known around the world for his performances, both club and country, still going strong. So he obviously went from Juve to AC Milan. Now he's come back to Juve alongside Ronaldo. Six foot three, low high, very, very nice. Three star is very nice as well. Great defending, solid physical as well. Pace is a little low. Um, if you compare it to someone like a Manolas, potentially even Koulibaly that we've not seen, uh, Chiellini... 
He's not going to be as good as those guys, most likely purely because he's just going to be a little bit too slow. I guess it also depends on his reactions and his agility stats, but as we keep saying, in-game stats are not available right now, so we can't look at them super in-depth, but still a good card, just not insane. What we got next then, Jerome Berting is going down and down over the years now, isn't he? As far as centre-backs go, Bayern Munich, Ger uh, Germany, stalwart, about as complete a player as the position gets. His stats are still sick. Like, if you compare that, if we now go up, he's 6'4", medium, medium, 4-star, weak foot. That's solid. You've got 286 rated here. He's got two less defending than Benucci, three more physical, and 12 more pace. Obviously, his shooting is way worse. His dribbling's a little worse. His passing is actually better. This is by far the better 86 rated centre-back here. So, still a very, very good card. Again, even though he's come down a couple of ratings, it's solid. Uh, and you'll probably be seeing that early on. And he will be a monster. Next to him, we've got his German teammate from Bayern. Uh, prime example of a versatile attacker in the modern game. Not in FIFA, though. In the last few years, his cards have just... They've not fit how FIFA works, and so he's not been that good. Maybe this will be Muller's year to shine. Four-star, three-star with high-high. Six foot one are all good, right? Good shooting, good passing, decent dribbling, pace and physical. It's quite a well-rounded card. It's whether he can play in like that false nine position and actually make it his own because of his good shooting stats. I don't know. I'm never a fan of Thomas Muller in game, but he's, he's awesome in real life. He seems like a really cool guy as well. But let's move on. Edison goes up to 86. Wow. Okay. He was sick last year. I thought he was very, very good for Man City. So this is probably a deserved upgrade. Some very nice stats here. Six foot two with a three star as well. As I said yesterday, depends whether goalkeepers actually reflect their ratings. As I said with the Allison uh, rating and his stats right there. So if they do, Edison will be even better than he was last year. And he was sick in FIFA 18. One of the few keepers that were actually decent. So... Excited to see Edison in FIFA 19. Let's move on. we got a few more to look at. Roberto Firmino. Deserved. I think Firmino is one of the most underrated players in the Prem. But up to an 86. Not sure about his hair on the card, but that's, that's fine. It's Bobby's choice. 5'11", a high high. 4 star, 4 star is solid. Now, I feel like he could be a little bit quicker than that. These stats are a little similar to the Thomas Muller card that we saw, with better dribbling and I think better physical. Shooting and passing, I believe, are the same with one more pace. So, Firmino's team of the season was unreal. His informs and special cards were really, really good. So, up to an 86 as a base card, I wonder how he'll play. Again, he does look similar to that Muller card. So I wonder how he'll compare to someone like that. But four-star, four-star is great for someone that you're going to play in that position. That is what we like to see. Let's move on. Marco Verratti. He had like a year, what was it, two seasons ago or something, where his rating just exploded. Since then, eh, it's not as good. And he's another one of these players in FIFA where he just isn't used. Because what? He's really small. Four-star, four-star is great. But he's got no pace, no shooting, no physical. All he's really got is his passing and his dribbling. Defending's not bad as well, actually, right now, which is decent. But he doesn't fit the FIFA meta. So FIFA 19, as I've said with a couple of other players, maybe like a, uh, a Matic, even though they're slightly different, lack of pace may not be as bad in that central position, and that would make Verratti thrive. few more to go then. Nicolas Otamendi up to an 86 after his standout season last year. He was very, very good. Helped him win the Prem, didn't he? Six foot, high high, three star, not bad. Great defending, great physical. Pace is a little lacking. You wouldn't use him over someone like Verm Dyke um, or some of the other centre backs that we're sure to see. Uh, even someone like an Azpilicueta that we saw earlier on. So we got two left to go. Thiago is an 86. Interesting. Spanish wi midfield wizard thrives in a deeper position. Allowing him to put his significant playmaking skills to good use. Yes, okay. So 5-9, medium, medium, 3-star, 5-star. Keeps his skill move. Shame he's not a 4-star weak foot, but never mind. Yet again, similar to other cards that we've already seen. Not the greatest in pace shooting or physical, but great passing and dribbling. Are these cards going to be usable? Because there's a lot of them that are similar to this. They really need to be good, but bring on FIFA 19 for us to see it. And the last rating of today's... Reveal is going to be Meza Ozil down to an 86. Okay. 
interesting. Two star weak foot, medium low, fair enough. Four star skills is interesting. And yet again, another one of these players that we've talked about multiple times today and yesterday already. Great passing and dribbling, but the other stats aren't good. So unless FIFA's playstyle has changed significantly, then a lot of these players that have already been revealed are going to be just a little bit... Eh. Are they going to be usable or not? So what are your thoughts on these? Do you think that these ratings are fair? Especially for someone like Mezit, who I know is a controversial player in real life. Uh, and especially is rating on FIFA. So what do you think on these? Uh, do you think that they are correct? Would you change any of these ratings or players? Do you think they're massively overrated or underrated? But that is 81 to 60. We will be back tomorrow for 61 to 40. So hopefully you can tune in for that one. I will see you there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Sub if you're new. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.